On behalf of NAALP, the National Association for the Advancement of Orthotics and Prosthetics, Peter Thomas here in Washington, D.C., thanking you for listening to this message and uh, wanting to bring to you news that the Injured and Amputee Veterans Bill of Rights has been reintroduced in the 113th Congress. This is a bill that has been introduced in three prior Congresses and actually passed in the U.S. House of Representatives in December 2010. The bill used to be numbered H.R. 805. It is now numbered H.R. 3408. 3408. And it's entitled the exact same name, an Injured and Amputee Veterans Bill of Rights. We are very grateful to our new sponsors of the legislation, our former sponsor retired from Congress. We now have a broader depth of original co-sponsors for this legislation. In particular, Renee Elmers, Congresswoman Elmers, has a very significant veterans and military presence in her district, represents Fort Bragg, in fact, and we're grateful to George Brees, Executive Director of NIAOP, for helping to make that connection. Uh, Renee Elmers was joined by uh, Congressman Phil Rowe, a, a, another, a, another Republican who serves on the uh, House VA Health Subcommittee, and by two Democrats. Um, First and foremost, uh, Congresswoman Brownlee from California, who is the ranking member on the Health Subcommittee of the VA Committee in the House, and uh, Representative Ruiz, also from California. Of the four primary co-sponsors, or, co or, or original co-sponsors of the legislation, two of them are doctors, and one of them, Renee Elmers, is a registered nurse. And three of the four serve on the VA Health Subcommittee, which is critical. Uh, to moving this legislation forward. In addition, there are some very significant uh, additional original sponsors of the legislation, uh, including Congressman McIntyre, uh, Congressman Price, uh, and others uh, that are uh, both from North Carolina and in other areas of the country. So we've developed a nice bipartisan, uh, broadened base of support for the legislation. Uh, also, there were about 10 veteran service organizations that agreed to, to support the legislation. Uh, and um, uh, again, uh, this, we expect that this legislation will be uh, referred to the VA House Committee and eventually, and hopefully, will be marked up and eventually passed by the House. That is our hope. Uh, the Bill of Rights uh, does the same thing that the prior bill uh, did. It's exactly the same language. It would, it would require the Veterans Administration to prepare uh, what amounts to a, a list of rights, a poster, a cons cons conspicuously uh, um, hung uh, in every O&P clinic that the VA has, as well as uh, on the uh, VA website, which would uh, lay out the rights that veterans have to quality orthotic and prosthetic care. And those rights include uh, a right to the appropriate technology, uh, a right to a second opinion, uh, a right to a spare prosthesis or orthosis, uh, a right to choose the practitioner uh, that provides the prosthetic orthotic care, um, in particular when the VA uh, provides that care through contract with private practitioners, uh, and, and a list of additional rights that are uh, listed in the legislation. We're hopeful that the committee moves on this bill. We're very hopeful that the Senate um, uh, follows suit and also introduces companion legislation. And uh, at this point, what we're asking our members and friends to do is to write their congressmen and to uh, ask for co-sponsors of H.R. 3408, the Injured and Amputee Veterans Bill of Rights. You can go to the NAOP website uh, and we will help you through that process with a draft letter. Uh, the goal is to get as many co-sponsors as possible. Uh, and ultimately to move the legislation forward. You know, uh, Secretary, Under Secretary of Health Petzl, in testimony in the summer of 2012, made statements uh, before the House VA Committee on Prosthetics that were uh, very supportive and very consistent with the VA Bill of Rights. And it's really now just a matter of putting that legislation through, uh, getting it enacted, and uh, ultimately allowing the veteran to be their own best advocate in taking an understanding and having an understanding of what their rights and expectations are for prosthetic care through the VA 
and allowing them to make their best case. Uh, if there's a prosthetic chief that's standing in their way or if they can't get the kind of technology that they want and, and, and need, uh, if, they, if they need a pros particular prosthetist that they can't get access to, this bill will enable them to at least make the argument uh, that they should have access to that care. And if they don't, uh, there is a mechanism in the bill to contact the VA, to call the VA and lodge complaints. And that, of course, is something that uh, Congress can, uh, can review and uh, conduct oversight uh, on and ultimately hold the VA uh, accountable to the rights that this bill uh, codifies and puts into print. So uh, congratulations all around. I want to pay special uh, uh, thanks to our NAOP leadership, in particular former President Tom Guth, who really, um, uh, from San Diego, who really uh, spearheaded this bill for the past three Congresses and, and has been very supportive in trying to move this forward. And of course, our current president, Paul Kruzikowski. Thank you so much, and um, we'll be back in touch uh, next month with uh, our next update. Thank you.